My name is Linda Bouchard. I was born, uh, I, was, I lived in Montreal, but I've lived a large part of my life in the U.S. And I've been composing music for over 40 years. And for the first 20 years of my life, I was writing just acoustic music, completely uh, separate from all the new technologies. And about 15 years ago, I started to be interested in the intersection of new technologies and traditional uh, artistic practice, because I could see that even the traditional artistic practice were being influenced by what was happening in the new technologies. And uh, at one point, uh, I decided to do um, multimedia and use technology, but the technology is really a secondary aspect for me of when I work with multimedia. What really attracted me to work with multimedia was to collaborate with others in other fields and uh, to um, reach a different public. Because when you work with different mediums and different artists, it takes you out a little bit of the crowd of experts that our new music brings in a hall. And also, um, I think also one drive was the desire to explore subjects that were really current, that were not necessarily political, although they are by simply because those are the ones that I seem to be attracted to explore, but um, to come out of the abstract world of music and, and uh, explore with other artists questions that I found particularly disturbing or that I just wanted to go into. And in fact, um, one of the most important, one of the only thing that uh, is a contract between myself and my collaborators is that right at the onset, I tell them that I have no idea where I'm going. And they have to be willing to go with me on a limb because we don't know where we're going. But I do have a subject that I want to explore with them and uh, that's what we do. Um, and as we explore the sub the, the, this subject, even though it is current, it is uh, a real subject, it is not abstract, uh, we don't create linear scenarios. We, uh, I just send the, the piste, I throw ideas, uh, different paths to follow, and uh, by throwing these paths, I believe that the audience connects the dots by what really resonates with them particularly. And at the end, maybe every different members of the audience saw a different piece or not saw a different piece, but really created their own scenario because of the often multi-layered information that are being conveyed. And th the, the first piece I'd like to talk to you about is called Identity Theft. Um, and uh, I, it's a very small team of uh, uh, choreographer, dancer, Iranian, uh, Eisen Haas. I created this piece in San Francisco where I've been living for the past 20 years. Uh, a musician, improviser, Kyle Bruckman. And uh, there's a, a young uh, actor who joined the company near the end because we needed someone to move the props and use the camera, but he became quite an important actor in the piece. Um, somebody's asked me, what do you find the hardest to work, uh, to do multimedia and to be in this creative process? And I said, it's raising money to do these projects because especially if you're a composer, people see you like, oh, what, what are you doing in that field? So it's interesting to see how this culture is changing, but I think it used to be that if you're a composer, you were a composer. You don't step outside of the music world. Um, so the process really quickly is a, a series of questions that I ask and we try to, to think about it and answer it and we improvise and we discuss what seemed to work and not work and we eliminate and because I'm a composer that's written music all my life, I can't help but write things down. So I document, I heavily document all our rehearsals and after every rehearsal, I create a kind of a storyboard of what we've done with all the different parts that are moving. And, uh, and we use this as a map, as a starting point for the next rehearsal where we, we discuss again what's happened, we add some new ideas and then we build the piece this way by adding and, and discarding. Um, and I'm going to stop here. I forgot to say that 
aside from the three people on stage, there is also David Call, who is a composer and a media artist, who was my technical director, and uh, and myself. Um, very quickly, I learned that even if I spent hours creating video, I couldn't run two computers at once because as soon as a piece started, I only thought about the music. So I always need someone to run the visual, visuals for me. So let me see if we have, we're gonna have a little excerpt here. This is from the premiere last year. No sound? Uh, they're both born in New York. here. Um, so when we started working on the idea of the identity theft, we explored the idea of identity and the idea of theft and what created our identity and it qu the, the piece became quite large in terms of its subject. And you can see that um, it is not very high tech and then there's a lot of really physical objects that are part of our piece and this is uh, very important to me because it's the idea of working with multimedia is to uh, to really connect with ourselves as, as, as human beings, as physical beings, and as fragile beings. Um, when I work with, with improvisers, um, especially improvisers who have really developed their language, what I do is to create the score, is I meet with the improviser, we uh, uh, record the signature sounds that they've developed, and uh, we create a kind of a lexicon to be able to understand what we're talking about. And then we start to create the, the piece together so that, for, because for me it's important that a piece can be repeatable. And in fact, with that in mind, uh, I've been lucky enough this year to receive a, a grant from the Canada Council for the Art, a composite grant, where I'm working with here at Metro Lab at Concordia and Sandy Baguati, developing a software um, that analyzes complex textures and timbres and, and creates a graphical notation. And it's still in progress, but this, this is a way to document pieces that don't fit in, in, in the traditional notation. And there's a lot of the other applications for this. Uh, the name of the project is called Life Structures, and uh, you can find some information on my website. Um, that, oh yes, and 
one of the things also that I do with improvisers in terms of music is that we've talked a lot about the idea of translation during this this uh, this uh, forum, and uh, I like to use a piece that is known or maybe less known, but and the musician improvises with the piece and tries to extract the kind of essence of that music without imitating it. So, for example, the first piece. The first time you hear the English horn come in, it's a song that maybe you are familiar with, uh, you, and you probably recognize it, which is a, a, a prayer that's being played all over Iran several times a, a day, all over speakers. And this was uh, part of the material that we started the piece with. So um, that, was, that was one example of the way that I like to bring in material that exists already. And I'd like to play you another uh, another uh, example of this with another piece, not this one yet. Um, another work I've developed is called All Caps, No Space. All Caps, No Space uh, has three versions. It can be just a concert piece. It can be an installation piece with live video, which uses a table that the audience is invited to write on, which has a sensor that opens or closes the channel. And then there's also a, uh, a performance with live video and also a, 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 an ensemble on the stage. This here, uh, this was the premiere of the concert version in, in, New York, in San Francisco. And when we developed the pieces, just so, first of all, I should say, what is All Caps No Space about? Uh, all Caps No Space was really coming from um, <coughs> my disconcertment about this onslaught of news and information that we get and how do we continue being informed as compassionate being without getting numb and how do we not just tune out? And uh, this was before the Trump era. <laughs> so now I have to even revise the piece. <laughs> but, um, and it just so happened. It just so happens that during those two weeks, uh, just at the beginning of our, our our residency at the Milk Bar in Oakland, uh, there was the shooting of the journalist at the in Paris, the Pebdo. Well, no, the um, somebody said it. Yes. Charlie Hebdo, and so there was a lot of news about this, and all this became part of our process. Right now, the musicians, I'd like to play you this little, it's a little example of uh, these musicians that are absolutely wonderful. They're called adults. They work into a very interesting idiom of improvisation. And they are improvising on a song that's very known to uh, French. It's La Vie en Rose, the Edith Piaf. Oh. Wait. I think you get the idea, the ones that you know the song. Um, so that was the concert version. And, and each, whenever we are playing this piece in, in at a different moment in time and in a different geographical notation, I integrate what's going on. I integrate certain things that are current events that are local, localized. Uh, now, uh, the next version I'm going to play you is uh, All Caps No Space, the full version. That was done in Banff. Usually it's for three musicians. It's a graphical score that I'm using and it's for a wind instrument, a uh, drummer, and a uh, string player in the low range. When we performed it at Banff, we included uh, several musicians <coughs> that were in the music program there to play with us. So I'm just going to play the first minute of this. <laughs> And there is a kind of cumulative effect too. I'm adding each bands on top of each other.
Okay, we'll stop here. Um, so the piece really takes all kinds of different shapes and the, another version that we have, uh, which is an installation, um, and it was kind of surreal because that day that we did this performance, um, what date was it? I'm trying to look at my notes right now. November 13, 2015, um, because it was a few hours after the Paris terrorist and the bombing attack that happened in several places in Paris. It was, it was rather surreal. So this is an installation where the idea is that the audience can walk around and uh, write on the table or simply listen or participate. <laughs> One minute, I'd love to ask if you have any questions or... Okay, well, you know, we're taking the, 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 um, we're taking the multimedia version on tour with this particular band, not without, with the three musicians, Francois Houle from Vancouver and Gordon Gardina on electric guitar and Kenton Lowen on drum. We're going to be touring uh, between Vancouver and Montreal in 2019, so we'll be able to play the full piece. And I'm also going to be doing uh, the premiere of the Life Structures at that time, this project that I'm now developing. Thank you very much. Thank you.